Hey everyone, welcome back to Life Under Deborah's Palm, where today what I thought I would talk about are four things not to do or say to someone who is the primary caretaker of a loved one with some form of dementia. I do realize that I may be preaching to the choir on this video, and I am curious to see what comments you all leave on things that frustrated you. And so I'm gonna start out in no particular order. Number one, please do not say they're not that bad. If you are not the primary caretaker, I, I can't tell you how many times people said that to us. Geez, they're not that bad. Yes, yes, they are that bad. And it can be very difficult to tell from, you know, kind of, I guess if you're not around them a lot every day, even in our caretaker journey, I think that I didn't realize how bad my mother was until she stopped driving and then I was with her more. And I was with her anyways. I mean, she's my mom and she lives nearby. But I think once that she stopped driving and I kind of saw the struggle more, how difficult it was for her to put together grocery lists or what she wanted at the store and then realizing what she was accumulating in her house. But people who say they're not that bad. Um, if you're talking to them on the phone, maybe you don't live nearby or you're doing like Zoom calls or FaceTime calls. Honestly, if you are not spending real time with them, if the primary caretaker is telling you they are that bad, you probably should believe them. I think the second thing that I'm going to talk about is their living situation. Uh, I can't tell you how many people in our families told us what we should be doing with parents when they live nowhere nearby and had nothing to do with it and were not willing to do that themselves. So when it came to living arrangements, they were like, oh, we don't want, in our case it was parents, we don't want them to go into assisted living. Well, I don't see you up here taking control over the situation and I don't see you offering to let them live with you. However, we were told all sorts of things. Why can't they live with you? No, they can't. And there were a few reasons, and I always say this, if you've seen my older videos, our house is full of stairs. We do not have a bathroom on the main living floor. Everything is up and down. All of our parents had physical issues that would have made that impossible. On top of that, when it came to my in-laws, it was both mom and dad with, um, dementia. So now we had people who were expecting us to literally build onto our house. We had one person say, well, can't you just put an addition on? Right, right. Because that's a hundred thousand dollars and that'll take some time. And by then we're going to have a bigger problem than what we already have. And when they're gone, who's left paying the property taxes on an in-law type apartment? But the same people are not willing to do it themselves. We turned right around and said, well, why don't you take them with you? Oh, wait, you wanna know why? Because everyone was working and no one wanted to take that time off. And that was exactly what would have happened. They could not be left alone and literally you would be chasing two people. That is extremely difficult. And, and one of them was extremely difficult and had a very difficult personality. So even bringing people in would have been an issue. But they're always very willing to tell you what to do. And then when it came time to actually move them into assisted living, it was the next, I don't know, barrel of monkeys, frustration, aggravation of, we don't like this place, we don't like that place. They hadn't been to visit and they truly didn't understand the financial situation. And they also didn't understand in our area, there are literally two, I think one, no, I'm sorry, right now, there is one facility that is memory care that takes on uh, both private pay and Medicaid. Everything that is med or I'm sorry, everything that is memory care in our area is private pay. There are some places that if you don't have a minimum of like a half a million sitting in your bank account, 
you can't even tour the facility. And of course, that's the one people were like, why don't you just send them here? Okay, sure, get right, we'll get back to you on that one. Number three, the constant criticism of the person who does the majority of the caretaking. Those of us who care, do the caretaking do not tell you every single thing that goes on during a day or a week. Very often, in our case, we had to deal with lawyers, we had to deal with investment companies, banks, Medicaid, the facility, all the paperwork that went on. And, and I, we also had to straighten messes out because in the dementia, things just got real crazy and we didn't know it. I had a week where I believe I spent, I had calculated it. It was almost 40 hours on the phone, straightening things out and getting, you know, talking to people and trying to figure out what was going on. We are doing things you are not. On top of that, we have to do the really hard things like take away car keys. You're not up here doing it. Nobody offered to do that. Everybody was like, wow, are you sure that needs to be done? And do you really want to do that? Do I really want them killing someone in their car? No, I, I don't want to live with that. But we are doing a lot of very difficult things on a day-to-day -day basis. And even when they go into assisted living, we are the ones dealing with the doctors. We have to go to the visits. We have to go to the hospital if that happens. We've, we're talking to their caseworkers. We're trying to straighten things out with medical conditions. We can't, it, and then we make decisions and it's like everybody's got an opinion and they're not here and you spend so much time explaining yourself and it's very draining. We went through it with some things where there were some medical things, actually it was a dental issue and it wasn't a big deal. And we talked to the dentist, explained the problem and the dentist said, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a life or death situation and all that it's going to take to, to correct this, it, the issue combined with a person with advanced dementia that doesn't understand what's going on and now you've got to put them in a dental chair for an hour. It was pretty close to an hour. It wasn't worth it. And you know, we, we didn't just randomly make a decision. We talked to the dentist and we talked to the caseworker and we got people's opinions as to what was best and made sure that they weren't in any real danger from not correcting this issue. And yet people are like, why didn't you take them to the dentist? You know, they got to have it. You know, why don't you go deal with it? Okay, <laughs> seriously, because you'll get to the point where you really want to say that. Please stop the criticism. You really don't know what we're doing and what it took for us to get there. You just see the end result and you have no idea it took us hours and sometimes days to get to that point. And for me, my fourth and final thing is the expectations that were put on us as caregivers. Meaning, oh, hey, we're doing Christmas at so-and-so's house. You have to bring them. You have to basically take care of them the whole time that they're there because no one else will step in and go like, hey, let me take mom or dad or whoever and you know deal with their dinner and let you at least chit chat with relatives and friends for a little while. Um, other things were like out of town. We, we had people that were like well aren't you bringing them to this event out of town? It was outdoors. It was cold in the morning. It was pretty I'd say like 45. It was pretty cool. Now you've got just an elderly person who's cold anyways. Now you've got to go pick them up, make sure they're all set. Sometimes there's incontinence in there. Bring them out, make sure they're in the bathroom, all that stuff. And sometimes we really just don't want to do it. We would like to come and enjoy ourselves for a little while and not have to bring them everywhere. And truthfully, I'm not saying this to be mean, like someone with dementia shouldn't be going anywhere. 
but sometimes you really have to weigh where you're taking them to and can they handle it. This particular event was hours long. It was over an hour drive there and back and then the outdoor stuff was about three hours long and then there was after like afterwards stuff you know um, food and all that and now you <sighs> As the caretaker, sometimes it's a reality. You just would like to go do something and not be responsible and enjoy the festivities. And they expect that you're going to do all this. And again, they're not willing to do it. That's my favorite part. They can come and do it if they like. We, were, we, we started just saying that, oh, are you going to bring this one or that one to this event? And we said, no, but you're very welcome to come do that. And you know what happened? No one came to the event. Like I said, I'm not talking about general, you know, easy stuff to do around town. And even that, as the disease progresses, you really need to weigh your options and what's best for the person with dementia. Sometimes things are too much and you'll see it as the disease goes, where gatherings with a lot of people and a lot of talking, they just get lost in the crowd. They sit there, they kind of stare at their plate. They, they have a hard time following conversations. It's not always a bad thing to leave them home or in a, where, whatever you call home, home assisted living, whatever. But expecting the caretaker to do all that all the time is just so unfair. And as I said, we just started turning the tables on people and saying, well, what are you gonna do? So those are my four things that I think people should not say or do. And as I mentioned, you got some more to add, put it down in the comments below. Tell me your story, I'd love to hear it. And until next time, have a great day.